Hey, welcome to Cheaper Jeeper TV, the show that helps you get the most for your money so that you get the most for your Jeep. I'm Dino, your host. Glad to see you here. In this week's episode, we're going to install the TerraFlex Quick Disconnect Sway Bar Links. We're going to discuss why you might want to put something like that in your Jeep, what you could do to install it yourself and save some money, and then in our tip segment, we're going to discuss some other alternatives. So stick around. So before getting into the explanation of why you might want a quick disconnect system for your sway bar links, I thought that I would show you the unboxing of the TerraFlex system, but I must have made a mistake and I didn't record the video, so I'm going to show you this diagram instead. In the TerraFlex front quick disconnect kit, you get two sway bar links that attach to pins on brackets that attach to the axle. When you want to go off road, you just simply disconnect the bottom of the sway bar link from the pin and attach it to the parking bracket and its corresponding pin. And then when you're going back on the road, you simply disconnect it from the parking pin back to the pin that's attached to the axle. So everything's taken out of the box. You get a set of instructions and you can see this is the bracket that goes on the passenger side and the link would get connected to it but when you disconnect it the link swings up to a pin on this bracket here to be out of the way and the same on the driver's side you've got the bracket that connects the link to the axle and this is where a pin will be held so that when you disconnect this link it could swing up to the pin and there's all the hardware. They say you can install the quick disconnect kit with the tires on, but it would be easier with the tires off, but it's also easier to videotape with the wheels off. So this is the sway bar. It's exactly the same on the other side. It's housed in these bushings here. And then this is the link that attaches to the axle. And this part of the sway bar is attached to the frame. And the purpose of this is to keep the Jeep from swaying too much when you're hitting a low spot in the road or the trail. However, when you're on the trail, you want to disconnect the link here so that the sway bar is not connected to the axle this way you get more extension on your axle which will give you more contact with the trail now technically with an 18 mil socket you could just disconnect this sway bar link right here and then on the other side as well and then you could hit the trail and you'll have full extension of your jeep when you're on the trail and when you're done you just use your 18 mil socket and connect it again now the thing with these disconnect systems it allows you to do that without using any tools. So that's what we're gonna to do today. So the first thing that we're going to do is disconnect the sway bar links here at the bottom on both sides. Then we're going to disconnect the top of the sway bar link which is connected to the sway bar on both sides so that we have this removed. So here on this side, when you disconnect this sway bar link at the bottom, there's a flag nut there, so you only have to use your wrench on this end here. And these are the AEV sway bar links that came with the lift. So they're a little different than stock, and they come off a little different than stock as well. On these ones, you put a wrench on this side and a socket on that side, and then that's how you would remove this type of link. Now on the stock link, as you saw in the lift video, you have to use a 6 mil hex key to hold the bolt of the link and then you put a wrench around the nut to remove it. So we'll start with an 18 mil socket and an 18 mil wrench and remove the lower sway bar link bolt on the driver's side and then we'll do the passenger side. Thank you. 
and now the passenger side. We now push down the sway bar so that the top bolt of the sway bar link is away from the frame. We've now completely removed the sway bar link from the passenger side and now we do the same on the driver's side. On the driver's side, I tried to orient the upper parking bracket and I noticed that I wouldn't have a lot of room up there to install the pin, so I decided to put the pin on the bracket before I install the bracket. The pin, or the stud, can be held on with a 9 16th nut and the stud has two flat sides that a 15 millimeter wrench can hang on to. The nut is torqued to 50 foot-pounds. The parking bracket is secured with a 13 mil bolt and nut torqued to 20 foot-pounds. Now repeat the process for the passenger side. It's now time to attach the lower sway bar link bracket that attaches to the axle. The problem with this bracket is that it doesn't fit exact due to some excess welds on the axle. So the stock bolt that goes through the lower sway bar link hole won't go through the bracket and the original sway bar link bracket. solution would be to either grind away a bit of the TerraFlex bracket or chip away at the welds on the axle. I'll choose to grind a little bit of material off the TerraFlex bracket. Approximately a millimeter of material was needed to be removed in order for the bracket to fit quickly followed up by painting the edge and I also sprayed some rust proofing for good measure. The next step is to secure the stud to the driver's side axle quick disconnect bracket. I secured the stud to the bracket with a 19 millimeter nut and I'll torque it to 75 foot-pounds once it's installed on the axle. The lower stock 18 mil bolt and nut are torqued to 59 foot-pounds. I used a vice grip on the stud while I torqued a 19 millimeter bolt to 75 foot-pounds. 
I also chose to align the hole in the stud towards the front of the Jeep so when it was time to pull or install the pin, it was easier. It's now time to install the passenger side axle quick disconnect bracket. At first I thought I would have a problem with this fitting as well. But I soon came to realize as I checked it out that the floor jack was blocking the positioning of the bracket. So I quickly raised the Jeep and repositioned the floor jack and the bracket fit nicely. It was a little tight, but there was enough room to torque the lower 18 mil stock bolt and nut to 59 foot-pounds of torque. Once again, instead of a wrench, I used the vice grip to secure the stud so that I could tighten the 19 millimeter nut. Which I later tightened to 75 foot-pounds of torque. I also align the hole on this stud to make sure it's facing the front of the Jeep so that when I have to pull the pin, it'll be easier. And it's now time to install the TerraFlex sway bar links, but before we do that, we have to install the 5 16 Zerk grease fittings. Torquing them to 5 foot-pounds. Of the two washers in the hardware package, you want to use the one with the small hole. While installing the sway bar link on the driver's side, I was able to tighten the 18mm nut without the aid of a hex key. The 18 millimeter nut was torqued to 69 foot pounds. And now repeat the process on the passenger side. Now it's time to start applying some grease. We'll start by applying grease on the studs. You could use any grease that you have available. And last but not least, we'll inject some grease into the Zerk fittings on the sway bar links. And that's it. We have installed the TerraFlex Sway Bar Quick Disconnect Kit. TerraFlex recommends retorquing 
after the first 300 miles and every 3,000 miles after that. So now let's have a look at how this thing works. If you're going off-road, you could pull the pin on your sway bar lower bolt and that allows you to quickly disconnect your sway bar and in this case we're on the driver's side. We quickly move over to the passenger side and repeat the process there by pulling the pin and removing the lower part of the sway bar link from the stud. Once it's disconnected, you can move the sway bar up so that you can secure the sway bar link to the parking bracket stud. Now it's just been done on the passenger side and we'll come back around and do it here on the driver's side. And once that sway bar is parked on the upper stud, you can just put in the pin and you're ready to go off road because you have quickly disconnected your sway bar link and parked it out of the way. And now to connect it back to your axle, you can see on the other side of the Jeep, I am disconnecting the sway bar link from the parked stud. And I'm coming around to the passenger side now and disconnecting the sway bar link from the park stud on the passenger side. With both sway bar links disconnected, the sway bar can move and allow me to fit the sway bar link to the axle stud. Putting the washer and the pin. And then go around to the driver's side and then pull the sway bar link over the stud and then put the washer in place and the pin, and now it's all back connected. Well, it's all done. It takes about a minute and a half to disconnect your sway bar links and then mount them into that parking peg and pin down, and that's real world time. So if this is a solution that would work for you, I've got a link to this product and some others that are also very good in the description section. What I liked about this product, unlike some of the other sway bar disconnects, they require that you grind off a piece of the bracket that holds your stock sway bar link. And I didn't want to do that, and this provided a bracket that didn't require that step. So that's one of the positives, plus this isn't the most expensive one out there as well. However, if you like this one, or if you'd like to see some others that are similar, I've got links in the description section. However, let's go on to our tip segment because I'll introduce you to a couple other alternatives. Now for some cheaper, cheaper tips. In this week's tip segment, I want to take you to Amazon and do a search with you on sway bar disconnects. And you could see as you type that in that you could select sway bar disconnects for any Jeep that you have. We'll pick JL because that's what I have. And you can see a whole slew of sway bar disconnects comes up on the screen. Some are brands that you're not familiar with, but they still have very good ratings and they're not that expensive. But then you also will see some well-known brands like Rough Country, there's TerraFlex, and I want to draw your attention to this one in particular, JKS, because that one has had very strong reviews from what I've seen online. So I'll have the link to the TerraFlex and some of these sway bar disconnects if you wanted to check them out and check out the reviews. But here's another option for you. I guess you would call this a DIY option. I've seen some people online use these for their sway bar disconnects where they use this clevis pin as a bolt that goes through their stock sway bar links and then they have a cotter pin that they fit through one of the holes with the use of a washer as well. I would imagine that a washer would need to be welded on the end so that it doesn't go through the hole that the stock bolt fits on. Although I have no personal experience to verify the strength of these sort of pins, you can do a search on YouTube under DIY sway bar disconnects and see what some other Jeepers have done in this regard. Hey, that's all I'm going to say for this episode about sway bar disconnects. If you uh, like this video or found it helpful, please feel free to give it a like. Or if you have some comments or questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments section. 
And if you have any subscriber tips that you would like to share, please feel free to leave them in the comments section below because they may make it in a future episode. Hey, that's it for this week's episode of Cheaper Jeeper TV. I hope that you found it helpful. And if you did, how about giving the video a thumbs up? And until the next time, I'm Dino for Cheaper Jeeper TV. Be well, stay safe, take care.